So all the time we talk about how stressful tax season is. And truth be told, in my neck of the woods, in my client roster, tax season is not stressful. And I'm going to tell you how we've eliminated tax season stress out of our lives, how my clients have done it, and how you're able to do it too, because it does not have to be stressful. In fact, it really shouldn't be. We're only imposing all the stress on us because of the story we're telling ourselves about tax season and all the work that we're putting off until tax season every single year. It's like waiting until Christmas Eve to do your Christmas shopping every year. It's like it's totally avoidable stress. It's just a question of do you want to participate in this or not? So I'm going to go through today a couple of pointers on how you can eliminate tax season stress completely just by doing a few key things that I promise do not take that much time. Number one, you can probably guess what it's going to be. and I'm going to get it out of the way right now, which is get your damn bookkeeping done. <laughs> get your bookkeeping done. If you give your accountant bank statements when you do your taxes, I'm going to, I'm going to be completely all right, legit. Every accountant listening is going to nod their head, but they are unwilling to say this to you. Giving your accountant bank statements instead of accurate bookkeeping, instead of accurate financial statements for your business. If you're just saying, oh, I just give my accountant bank statements and they just go prepare the tax return. What's happening is let's just pretend that they came to you and said, hey, I'm going to need you to give me a cake next week. And, they, and you were like, okay, cool. And then you see them next week and you hand them a box and it has in it eggs, milk, butter, flour, sugar, vanilla, whatever else. <laughs> and you look at them, here's your cake. And they go, the F is this. Wait a second. I ordered a cake, not all the ingredients that make a cake. Ah, but you're doing this to your accountant every tax season, every single tax season. You need to be giving them financial statements they can use to do the tax return. What you're doing is you're giving them the ingredients to financial statements, which is part of the, the bank statements are part of that ingredient list. But what you're doing is giving it to them raw, and then you're asking them to cook it for you. And all they've agreed to do is take the cake and bring it somewhere to deliver it. But you're asking them to bake it too. And this is the problem, is that there's not a clear understanding of what your accountant or your tax preparer is supposed to be doing and what you're supposed to be doing. Your job technically is to hand over done financial statements unless you have specifically engaged them to bake that cake, to make the books, to make the financial statements. So unless you have, you're paying them to do all of that, then it's not expected that they will. So if they are doing this for you, but they're not charging you extra, understand that they are probably activating some weird people-pleasing thing because they should not be saying yes to that. They should not be doing all of that work for the price of one tax return. And this is part of the problem is that we have really unclear expectations in our industry in accounting and taxes on what should be included and what you're expected to do. But I'll be the one to say you are expected to hand over a profit and loss, clear sets of financial statements. If you are unable to do that because of a lack of skill or a lack of availability of information, great. There is a professional called a bookkeeper that will be able to help you with that. But you need to call on them. So basically, if you're not ready to bake the cake and you don't understand it, hire a baker <laughs> to do it for you because all the accountant, the tax preparer is expecting is a done cake. So if you're not sure how to do that, then you need to outsource that part of the process. It's pretty simple, but a lot of people don't understand that accountants or tax pros don't typically do all of these things. They typically just publish the story. But if you hand them the bank statements, they have very little to the very little tools to do that. And it will take me much longer. So number one, you should be doing that. And that should be happening in early January. Number two, you need to be talking to your accountant now. And I know it's like the end of 2023 right now. We're getting into January. Please call your accountants, email them, whatever method you use with them, approach them and say, hey, I want to have a call specifically for 20 to 30 minutes in January. Ideally, I want to have a call and I want to just establish expectations for tax season. What do you need by when and when can I expect a turnaround or how often can I expect to hear from you with a status update on my return? And just lay that all out there. Now, that could be an email, that could be a text message, that could be a voice note, that could be anything. But just set the right expectations with your accountant on what you will be 
expected to do, provide, and what their expectations are to you. Because where a lot of the insecurity happens, and I, I have this conversation every single April and every single October, is I, you know, we just came out of October a couple of months ago, and I had several conversations with people saying, hey, I'm looking for a new tax preparer. I'm looking for a new accountant. Why? Because my other one didn't respond to me. Or I gave them all my documents in February and I never heard from them until August or something like that. But if you are having this conversation with expectations, then you know exactly when they are or are not being met. But if you never set expectations, then you're going to get word from them when they're ready to call you. They might be really busy. They might just prefer not to be doing tax work at certain times of the year and they're just putting it off. But if they're not communicating with you and that's really important to you, you have to make that known. Make it known what's important to you and what you want in an accountant. Because if they're not giving you that, well, yes, you can go somewhere else. But number two <laughs> option is that you guys have that conversation and say, this is what I really expect. Can you provide that? And it's very possible they can. It's just that they haven't been asked to before. So make sure you have that dialogue. So again, ways to reduce tax season stress. Number one, get your books done. Have them done ahead of time. Have them done right now. Number two is talk to your accountant and set those expectations. And finally, number three, I'm going to give you a tool if you don't really want to talk to your accountant right now or you want something you can do right now that's really fast. Here's the fastest thing you can do. Here's what I want you to do. Go back to last year's tax return. Okay, go grab it out of the file cabinet or whatever. Go grab last year's tax return and all the documents you gave your accountant. This might be in a digital folder as well. Go open that. I want you to make a list of all the documents you got last year that you gave your accountant and how many of them they were. So like make your grocery list. So if you got three 1099s, list them. If you got two W-2s, list them. If you got a 1099-R, list it. If you got a 1099-B, you know, all of these different things, list them out. Here are all the documents that I got last year from these different banks, these different institutions, these different providers, these employers. And make a list of all the businesses. You know, make a list of all the K-1s you got, et cetera. And then what I want you to do is make that list and like say a spreadsheet. And then pay attention to the date you got them last year. Did you get them in February 15th? Did you get them in March? Did you get them in January? Start an inventory list. I'm not kidding. This is so valuable because this is going to help you make sure all the I's are dotted and T's are crossed. Start a list of all the docs that you're expecting to get this year and start checking them off when you get them and put them in a folder with this list if you're a more physical copy person or put them in a Google Doc folder or a digital folder, a secure folder when you get them in, like scan them in and put them in there or download your statements off your, your bank account right online and put them in there and organize them. Like just put them in there all organized based on what you provided last year. Game changer. <laughs> Game changer. I will tell you from experience that 90% of the work your tax accountant is doing is making sense of the documents that you've sent them. If they're not well labeled, if they're not clear what they're designed to tell you, if they're not really clear where they're coming from or, you know, where the numbers are, that's going to make your or their job a lot easier or a lot harder, excuse me, a lot harder if it's not labeled. But having something that's well labeled, having something that's organized and having a list of what you expect to receive and the documents you haven't received yet, this also heightens your awareness to ask for those docs. I couldn't tell you how many times I had a tax preparing client um, come to me and say, okay, yeah, all my docs are in and it's like March. And then we file the return and they go, hey, first week of April. Hey, Shan, about that. I got another 1099 just now. It's like, come on, we already just did the return. We have to amend it. So it's a whole process. It's a whole extra fee. Yes, you can possibly do a superseded return for my accountants out there who are like, you don't have to amend it. But you can basically cause a little bit of a hiccup in the process and a higher risk of something happening and going wrong if you don't have all that laid out. So definitely make a list of what you need. Keep track and keep everything in one place when you get it in those envelopes in the mail or when you get them digitally, put them all in one place so you can go back to them, download that whole thing and send it to your accountant. They will love you for it. Also, going back to number two, because I thought of this as well, going back to setting expectations with your accountant. 
a fantastic question to have in this dialogue, write this down, is what could I do to make tax season more successful for both of us? What could I do to make tax season more successful for both of us? That is a very productive question because if your accountant says, I don't know, well, they may not be putting much thought into this. And I don't know if this is the right person for you. But if they say, great question, here's what would really help me, listen to that. And perhaps consider, hey, would you be open to, if I get all of this done on time and I get all this over to you and we're able to get this done in, say, February, like let's just say you don't have any documents expected to come in March, and you say, hey, if I could get all this over to you and we could get this done in February, do you offer any sort of discounts or rebates for me getting everything in super early? Just ask. What's the worst that could happen? They say no. Because I used to do this. I used to have essentially rebates for when clients had everything in super early. So, and I didn't broadcast this, but I would say if you were a particularly cooperative client who got things in early and they were complete and they were organized, I charged you less. It's not a penalty to those who don't. It's more of a reward to those who do. So keep that in mind too, that a lot more accountants are, they're upcharging if you're, if you take a long time, if there's a lot of correspondence, if there's a lot of time needed to invest in you to get your return done. But if you get stuff in early, chances are you'll get rewarded. So it can't hurt to ask. It can't hurt to just present the idea because they may not offer it, but maybe you just gave them a really good idea. So think about that. So again, lower your tax season stress by simply being ready for what's coming, setting expectations and opening that line of communication. You wouldn't believe how powerful it truly can be.